Got to agree with Kevin as I read the email that said three to five minutes. I was like, wait a minute. I watched some speeches that have been as long as movies. <laughs> Doing my research, trying to figure out what's going on. And I'm usually a big proponent of keeping it short, simple, but then I thought about my turn to get up here and give a speech. And I was like, you only get inducted once. So if you guys need a bathroom break, some popcorn, anything like that, settle in, get ready. The good thing is that I wrote it all down, though. So there's a definite beginning and a definite end. I'm in this club called Toastmasters. And they actually encourage speechless note, note, noteless speeches. <laughs> But one of my biggest role models reads her speeches, and she's all but conquered the world. I mean, this woman's brought the U into the top 50. We have new buildings popping up all over our campus, and she can raise money like no other. So I feel like if President Shalala can do all that while reading from notes, that I'm inclined to believe that this is a characteristic of a well-organized person who knows the importance of clear, concise thoughts, and that reading your speech is OK. I'm not sure what we're gonna do without her. I must say, it's an honor to be on this stage tonight with my fellow inductees. What a representation of the hurricane legacy we have represented here tonight. To me, legacy is something you leave behind. It's the result of your actions that leave lasting memories that inspire others to proceed in making their own. Number 26 is a great example of what I mean about legacy. As we all piled into Buck's truck for 6 a.m. workouts, we didn't know that we were making memories or laying the foundation for a great sports career. We didn't know that we'd be in the UM Sports Hall of Fame. Sean isn't here, but memories of him and the passion he performed with inspired me to make the most of each competition and each moment in general in my life. And I love a good competition. And unknowingly, number 51 was a worthy opponent. I first became more than remotely aware of Jonathan Vilma's existence when I had a tough class. I went to Dave Wyman, the academic advisor, and asked for a tutor. He suggested John Vilma. He's a bright guy with the same major, Lauren, and at 17 years old, I was shocked. I came to the University of Miami for an education. Certainly, there couldn't be an athlete here smarter than me, and definitely not a boy. It became an instant silent competition to be the person that Dave recommended whenever someone else needed help. And later I found out that he had a brilliant older sister in Alice, and I figured surely she was helping him with his homework. Is everyone comfortable? You guys good? Because I haven't even got to the people I want to thank yet, so, okay. In 2001, I was fresh out of high school and I had no idea how to work hard. I was all talent with tons of room for improvement, but to succeed, my work ethic would be tested. Enter Amy Deem and Andrew Swayze. Coach Swayze ignited a fire in me that, to, that wanted me to be better than good. In 2001, excellence was a lifestyle, and he worked track and field with the same intensity that he worked that 2001 National Championship football team. The Heck Athletic Center was electric at that time period, and I convinced myself that anything that anyone could do, I could do just as well or better except the 12 minute run. I get tired just thinking about it. I didn't train for it as a freshman coming in because I just was used to getting out there, doing the best that I could, and that being good enough. Well, that was the first time I thought Coach Dean was gonna be sending me home, but it wasn't the last. Another notable time was when we had a 300 meter time trial. I was already flustered because I didn't understand the point of a 100 meter runner having to run 300 meters as a time trial. So I approached it with the same attitude. Just go out there, do the best I can, and, and see what happens. Well, I probably broke the world record for 200 meters of a 300 meter race, and then I died a horrible death for the last 100 meters. I thought my dad was definitely gonna have to come pick me up. Thank goodness that my competitive spirit kicked in and my work ethic progressed and I've come such a long way since then. I've often thought lately about how I'd love to go back to college. There's not a school that I ever wanted to go to besides the University of Miami. There's not a day that I came here and ever regretted being a hurricane. Hmm. Actually, I gotta take that back. Just, there was this one time when Coach Dean implemented the no bacon at breakfast on race day rule. 
And that was the moment I thought about transferring. I mean, why can't we eat bacon on race day? That, that's, that's what you need to compete, right? But 13 years later, I thank God for her often. Understanding me isn't the easiest thing. I'm a bit strong-willed, if I do say so myself. Um, usually, I carefully consider the consequences before I act. And then I choose to act knowing that there may be an explosive reaction. I usually follow my heart. And your heart usually seldom leads you down the wrong road. But occasionally, it appears to be in the right place when really it should always be on the left side of your chest cavity. In those instances, Coach Deem stood up to me. She spoke candidly and exercised patience while giving me the right to choose my own path. It was the only kind of correction that I would respond to. Coach Dean, thank you for your honesty and your commitment, for 10 years of hard workouts, and for recruiting Coach Steve Rubin to recruit me. A great captain knows the importance of a stellar crew. With that, I'd like to thank a little bit more of my crew, starting with my parents for letting me go so far away to school. My mom is here tonight, and my dad is watching from above. Donna and David taught me that education is the key to the future. That message stuck, and initially, the only reason I wanted to come to school and sprint was to get the free education. That was the most important thing to me. I was so excited to pay Coach Dean back for the opportunity to get a free education. I'd also like to thank Dave Wyman, the academic advisor I mentioned earlier. Once, I was getting ready to cheat on a test, and someone told Dave on me. And I wasn't cheating because I didn't do my part to prepare, but because I thought the professor was insane and there was no way to be adequately prepared for this exam. So Dave called me the next day right before the test and said simply, Lauren, is this gonna be worth it? And in that moment, I knew that I had let myself down. As I said, I came to the university for an education. I didn't come to be a world-class athlete. And not only had I let myself down, but I let everyone that was rooting for me down as well. So I went into that exam, intent on taking it on the chin with the end result being a B minus. The lesson for me being that I'm not invincible, that we all have limitations, and that the best way to deal with them is by meeting them head on and never humbling yourself enough to ask Jonathan Vilma for help. <laughs> Next, I'd like to thank Chicken Kitchen for creating that chop chop and the curry mustard sauce that was so good. <laughs> and selling it at a price that a college food student could almost afford. Me and my roommate would get the big one and have to split it because budget was a little bit tight sometimes. And last but certainly not least, my village. My favorite saying is, it takes a village to raise a child, and I use it often. Over the course of my lifetime, my village has expanded to the size of a small country. And some of my village is here tonight. Would you guys please stand? Swayze, I see everybody, Ariel. You guys know who you are, really? I could have this whole room stand up. <laughs> Calvin, Jalen, without each and every one here tonight in, in this room and those people who just stood up, I wouldn't be the Lauren that I am. I wouldn't be here and I wouldn't be a four-time Olympian. So in closing, this is where everybody can sigh and say, ooh, this really was a long speech. <laughs> I found a quote from fellow inductee Kim Hope on why she chose Miami. It says, I wanted to show all the younger players from my hometown that if you work hard enough, your dreams can come true. I think it's safe to say that each person here tonight has inspired more than one young athlete and more than one young person. Congratulations to each of you. Today is supposed to be a very special day, but really, it's just like any other day, one where it's great to be a Miami Hurricane. 